everybody and welcome back to this video. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new video in a 2024 election prediction between Sherrod Brown and Ron DeSantis, both being probably the most electable candidates for their respective parties. If you don't know who Sherrod Brown is, he is the Democratic senator from the state of Ohio who won by a pretty comfortable mar margin against Jim Ronacci, the Republican challenger. And he has been in this position since 2006 as Ohio Democratic Senator, who first won re who first won his election by a huge margin and by a pretty decent margin in his next two elections as well. But he probably would have some trouble winning in 2022, 2024. So for Sherrod Brown's safe states here, we have many of the generic Democratic states. You do see a little bit less compared to what Joe Biden had in 2020 because of the national environment. But you do see a little bit more than what Joe Biden or Kamala Harris would receive. Well, for Ron DeSantis, you also have a little bit less safe states because Sher Brown is a better candidate compared to Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or Hillary Clinton or Pete Buttigieg, or basically anyone, as I think he's the best Republican candidate possible. And right now, just based on the safe states, Ron DeSantis trails by 21 electoral votes, but typically speaking, the Democrats are ahead in the safe and likely states while Republicans catch up in the lean and tilt states. So that ends our electoral map at 137 for Sherrod Brown and 116 for Ron DeSantis. For Sherrod Brown's likely states, basically, a few of these states that did not characterize as safe blue will go as likely for Sherrod Brown, giving him 204 electoral votes. Well, for Ron DeSantis, he will carry a lot of the likely states, Kansas, Texas, Florida, because he's from the state, and the state of Iowa, as well as that the state of Alaska, and main second congressional district that does not include the state of Ohio, as Sherrod Brown is a senator from the state as well. So, that brings... Ron DeSantis is much closer to Sherrod Brown at 204 electoral votes to Ron DeSantis' 202 electoral votes. Now for the lean states for both parties. For Sherrod Brown, his lean states include Maine's at-large vote, probably not too surprising. Going to the state of New Mexico, a lean state for Sherrod Brown. I also consider Minnesota a lean state for Sherrod Brown. I think also the more moderate state of New Hampshire will be lean for Sherrod Brown, as he's, as he, as he does have some more, more moderate voters to appeal there in the 2018 mid midterm elections in his Senate run and a lot of elections. So yeah, that is th those are lean states for Sherrod Brown. He's at 225 electoral votes. Ron DeSantis has quite a few lean states. Sherrod Brown does have the better appeal in the Rust Belt, but he's going to suffer from the Sun Belt. Uh, North Carolina, Georgia, which is actually a flip from 2020, the state of Arizona, the, and the state of Ohio. Those states will be lead states for Ron DeSantis, putting him pretty close to that 270 magical number to become the president. Look at these states. I think most of I think most of these are not that surprising. Sherrod Brown will lose Arizona and Georgia, two more moderate states, but those are more hit more states that you need the moderate appeal, you need that uh, moderate candidate appeal. I don't think Ron DeSantis, um, Sherrod Brown will do too well in, in the Sun Belt as he is from the Rust Belt. But for the state of Ohio, he will do better than, than basically all the other Democratic candidates. Biden lost the state by 8 points. If Biden runs again, he's probably going to lose by a much larger margin, maybe 10, 11 points. But I think Sherrod Brown, being from the state, being in a more competitive position, basically in the state of Ohio, does give him that advantage there. Lean state for Ron DeSantis is probably about a four or five point victory. Also, my margins are in the description down below. For show sure, Brown's tilt states, there are two of them. One is the district, Nebraska Second Congressional District. I think he would do well in that district. If you ask me, again, he could lose... I mean, he could lose the district, and it's a very close district. Actually, I, I'm actually going to go give it to Ron DeSantis very nearly. That's probably going to be like a toss-up district, a very competitive district, although the one electoral vote probably doesn't matter that much. 
Washington Brown's only tilt state will be the state of Michigan. He does have that white working class appeal in the state of Michigan, in my opinion. Binder won the state by three points, and I think Sherry Brown will do very well in Oakland, in, in Macomb, in those kind of counties. In areas like Grand Rapids, he's probably going to suffer a little bit from Ann Arbor, Detroit, and I think when everything is said and done, he'll very narrowly carry the state. For Ron DeSantis, probably Wisconsin could be lean as well, I, in my opinion. Um, I don't. I think Wisconsin's pretty far gone for the Democrats at this point. It's trending red pretty significantly over the past years. And Pennsylvania, the suburbs could be more friendly to Brown, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He should be able to do a little bit better from the rural areas, but just not enough to win the state. Nevada will also be a tilt state for Ron DeSantis, which is quite interesting because it. I think it's, I think it's quite interesting that in the modern times we have Michigan go blue, but the state of Nevada going red. But I think that is due to the fact that should Brown. Again, Ron DeSantis is from the Sun Belt, but Sherrod Brown is from the Rust Belt. So, a little bit different of the map than you than you would normally expect. A little bit better for the Democrats than another re- election prediction, but yeah. So, thanks for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!